Hey everyone, I got 13 tips to help you get out of debt. Uh, to help with some commentary, we have a special guest. Hey guys, it's Sarah, dressed like a devil, and Chad. And in this video, we're going to talk to you about how we paid off all of our debt. The only debt we have right now is our mortgage, and our house is halfway paid off. We're 36 years old, um, and this is how we did it basically. And we probably only have about a few more years left. Yeah, we'll probably have our house paid off in two years and it's all about lifestyle. So Chad's going to talk to you about first cutting expenses and then we'll, about making more money. So the first tip I want to talk about is saving enough for a down payment on a house. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to go out and play devil's advocate here and ask how on earth is a young person in their early 20s supposed to come up with that kind of cash so they say that you're supposed to have about 20 percent for down payment i kind of argue try to get even more than that um, the way that i was able to save some money is i lived with my mom for the first year and a half and uh i mean at looking back like i would have done it for another couple of years and and saved enough for 50 percent if you got 50 percent down payment you got a great head start on paying off your house early and if you if you can't live with your parents, if that's not going to work out, uh, I mean, live with roommates. A lot of people do already do that. Um, when when we um, moved in together and had a house, we had a roommate, one of our friends, Alec, and uh, yeah, he kind of helped pay pay the mortgage a little bit for us. So my second tip is to pay extra payments on your debt, especially on your mortgage. Uh, there's a lot of extra payoff calculators out there online. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, they'll tell you like for how much you're paying extra, how much shorter your, your 30 year or 15 year lo home loan is going to be. Um, on a $150,000 loan, if you spend it, if you put an extra $100 towards that every month, you'll pay off that loan six years, a little over six years earlier. Um, on a 30-year loan, so you'll have it paid off in about 24 years. Uh, what we do is we pay an extra thousand dollars a month, and that is allowing us to pay off our house 21 years earlier. Um, the, the way I, I do it, I just set an automatic payment on my online bank account. I kind of just set it and forget it. So wait a minute, devil's advocate again. <laughs> I don't know why I keep laughing. Once, you put, once we pay off the house, we're not able to deduct our mortgage interest on our taxes anymore though, right? You're not, um, but there's a bunch of other areas you can get deductions from on your taxes. You can, um, there's a, you can use your investments through like your 401k. Which I'll talk about a little later. I mean, you can buy another house and use, set that house as your primary residence and use the house that you're paid off to rent it out on Airbnb. Um, so a lot of people say that it's better to invest that money than to put it in a house, but your house is, once you have your house paid off, your house is then your asset. It's no longer a liability. And real estate is a great investment to have. Third tip, pretty straightforward, just spend less money. Um, I mean, a lot of people kind of say like that they don't have enough money to put towards an extra payment, but there's so many different ways that you can figure out how to cut costs. Um, the best way I'd, I've learned to do it is just set up systems like say, for example, okay, if you go out to eat a lot, set up a system where you only allow yourself to go out, out to eat once a week. Um, when you, like I still use a credit card for everything. But I get rewards points for all all the money that we spend on credit cards, and with those reward rewards points, I get Amazon gift cards. And if there's something non-essential that I want to buy, I wait until I have enough points on my from my Amazon gift cards. Um, another thing I do is cut my own hair. It's been a lot easier lately with this haircut, um, but I've been doing that for over 15 years. I haven't paid for a haircut, and uh, Another thing you can do is just buy used stuff or buy stuff from like Ross, Ross and No, Marshalls. shop on eBay. Buy from me. <laughs> He's wrong. Be a hoarder. 
No, Ross and Marshalls, they usually have like last year's uh, fashion trends. I mean, it's not cheap stuff. It's the stuff that you would typically buy in a... Uh, in like any department store, but it's like last year's trends. So don't be a pawn of the fashion industry. They just want to make more money off you. Tip numero number four. That's <laughs> two words. Um, <laughs> tip number four. Uh, choose choose which debts to pay extra on. Um, I typically, I mean, I always pay off my credit card every month. I don't ever let any um, balance go over a month. Um, I pay off my high. I paid off my highest highest debts first, um, but I right now I'm paying off like my largest amount of debt, which is the mortgage. I mean that's our only debt right now. Um, but before that, we did have like car payments and stuff. But I did still pay most of it towards the house. That's not what Dave Ramsey says. What does Dave Ramsey say? Dave Ramsey, you guys know who he is. He says that you're supposed to pay your smallest bill first so that you're more motivated. Um, and it's called the debt snowball, but we don't need external motivation. We're internally motivated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a that's another way to do it. You don't have to, I mean, kind of pick. You, have, you can pick which approach you want to take. Um, I did kind of do the snowball method once my student loans were only like, I only had like a couple thousand left that just... I paid the rest of that off just so I could put the extra payments I was putting towards that towards the house. So, I mean, that's, you can do that. Tip number five, always prepare for emergencies. They, they could happen. Uh, they'll, some of them will eventually happen. Um, make sure you always have health insurance. Make sure you have enough saved uh, to, to get you through. Not having any income for um, about six months is, I think, usually the the best amount of time. I've been around since biblical times, all right? Nothing has happened to me. Your fear keeps me alive. I mean, you could be healthy the rest of your life or something could happen. Um, medical bills are the leading cause in the U.S. of bankruptcy, so it's one of those things you don't want to mess around with. Tip number six, be a minimalist. Did you know that Americans spend $2.5 billion a year to store their stuff in storage units? That's how big the storage unit market is. Um, so it's just crazy to me that people keep crap that they don't use for years and in some little shed somewhere and they're paying, what, like 100 bucks a month for that. Um, so, I mean, clutter just makes you unhappy. It takes more time to clean everything. Get a house cleaner. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is one thing that me and Sarah argue about sometimes. I'd rather do a lot of chores myself. You'd rather have me do it. No, I'd, st <laughs> I'd still clean. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's up to you. If you want to get a house cleaner, if you feel like your time that you're saving um, by getting a house cleaner, that you're able to make more money off of that time, then go for it. Tip seven, share a car if you can. Uh, I mean, Sarah and, Sarah and I have shared a car for the last five years. It's paid off. We don't have any car payment. It's a beautiful thing. Wait, you guys only have one car? What do you do if you both need a car? Yeah, we, we hear that one all the time. By people that have like five cars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, we, what we've done is we've set our lives up a certain way when we bought our first house. Uh, I made sure I moved close to a train station. I was working in the city where I could just commute to the city. Um, we did have two cars at one time and one car just sat there the whole time. I'm like, why are we paying even just the insurance on it? Um, so we got rid of it. We've used one car since and there's very few times, maybe like a few times a year where we'll both need the car at the same time. Uh, we both do work remotely, so it helps a lot, but that's another way that we've just set ourselves up that way. Um, but yeah, if we ever both need a car at the same time, the rare times that happens, I can rent a car if I really need to. I'll get Uber. Uh, it's still a lot less than paying a, another car payment for 12 months, paying insurance for another car. So just makes total total sense. If you can do it, share a car. 
Or if you live in the city, get rid of your car and just take public transport transportation. Or get off your butt and ride a bike. Yeah, ride a bike. Tip eight, cut the cord, get rid of cable. You don't need it. The average cable bill, they say, costs $100 a month. Is it really worth it for those shows? But how will I watch sports or Real Housewives? I, we live in the age of abundant media. Uh, there's content everywhere. There's free content everywhere. Check out some- Watch, watch us on YouTube. <laughs> Check out some of the uh, like free content out there and you'll find other things to watch. Go to a friend's house if you really want to watch the game or want to catch up on your Real Housewives. Tip nine, be healthy, exercise, eat good food, don't, don't cheap out on your food, drink a lot of water. Um, I mean, the diet that I personally follow is the 4-Hour Body, uh, Tim Ferriss book. I'll put a link in the description. Um, a lot of this stuff just keeps your mind sharp and your mind is your your most valuable resource. Wait a minute. But I could save so much money by eat, living off ramen noodles every day. You can save money today doing that, but if you do that for in the long term, it's probably going to end up costing you a lot more money in healthcare bills. Number 10. Don't have kids. What, what, what? Do you hate kids? I don't hate kids. We have, we have 10 awesome nieces and nephews. Um, I know this tip is not for everyone. Some people already have kids. I'm not saying get rid of your kids. But if you don't have <laughs> kids yet, uh, just know that, I mean, most people do know this, but it's a huge financial commitment. They say the average kid costs $300,000. So if you're going to do it, make sure you're really committed to it. And uh, a lot of people, I feel like, not a lot of people, but maybe some people have kids because they feel like that's what they're supposed to do. That's the next step. Um, but there is a lot more things in the life other than having kids. If you really want to be ex exposed to kids, then become a big sister or big brother. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of kids out there that you can spend time with and, and help. Tip 11, just make more money. Uh, I mean, a lot of people say, well, that's easy to say, like, I wanna make more money. Um, but there, I mean, there are plenty of ways that you can increase your income. Um, if you are working for an employer somewhere, you can negotiate for a raise. Uh, a lot of people don't even do that. Um, if you, and if, you're, if you do have like a full-time job or a part-time job and that's your only income source, Try to, try to figure out multiple income streams. It, you're not always guaranteed that that one income that you have is always going to be there. Um, so, I mean, Sarah's got tons of videos on this of, of what she's doing with multiple, in, multiple income streams. Um, and we're, as we talked about before, we're working together trying to figure out some extra stuff. But money is evil. Shouldn't you just do what you love all the time? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely am for doing what you love, but you also have to make sure there's a demand for what you love. Um, I, I went to college for meteorology. I used to love watching the Weather Channel, and I was like, oh, I want to be a weatherman. So, yeah, I went to school for that, and then I realized, like, I'm not going to make hardly any money as in meteorology, and there's I'm either going to have to join the military um, or work for, like, National Weather Service for no money. So I just looked at what I wanted to do. I was taking computer science courses at the time and I enjoyed working with computers. It's not like my biggest passion, but it's still something that I like doing. And um, I looked it up. I mean, get paid really well. Um, it's not something I'm going to do forever, but for right now, it helps me get out of debt. And I at least enjoy it a little bit. It works for me. Tip number 12, invest some of your money. Now, I mean, you have there are potential to make a, a huge amount of money with just a little bit of investment. Um, so what I usually recommend is find things that you're excited about. With me, it's new technologies. Um, so I've invested a little bit of money in cryptocurrencies this year. I've made over, I mean, Bitcoin has been doing really well, so I've made like over probably over like a thousand percent i haven't really tallied the total but I, amazing returns with cryptocurrencies i'll put 
a link in the description if you want to join uh, an exchange and buy some Bitcoin. Um, you can also use Robinhood, which is a way to buy stocks for free. A lot of other uh, places, a lot of other sites like Fidelity, they'll charge you fees. Um, but Robinhood is all free. I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, if you have an if you work for an employer and they offer any kind of matching on 401k or stock purchase plan, definitely take that um, because that is all free money. If you're if they say like if you uh, put six percent uh, towards 401k and they'll match fifty percent of that, definitely take it. What I thought you said to put your extra money towards paying off debt or a house. So I mean, as I said before, there are huge potential for upside potential with investing money. So if you find something that you think is going to do well in the future, take some money and put it towards it. Uh, personally, I'm a little more risk averse. I don't, I wouldn't put all of my money or huge chunk of my money in the stock market. Um, but I mean, I always try to put it set, set aside a little bit and invest. Step number 13, treat yourself. Every once in a while, you got to kind of splurge. And if there's one, like a big vacation you want to take, uh, take it. I mean, we're only here temporarily. Uh, we're not meant to just never spend money again. Um, so go out hey, and do that's, something. Hey, that's hypocritical. You talked about following all these steps, and now you're saying, oh, forget it. <laughs> so I think that the important thing is just, just to make sure you reward yourself. Um, the, oh, yeah. So the four hour body that that book that I recommended earlier, we have a cheat day once a week, and the reason why you do that is, I mean, you nobody wants to eat healthy twenty four seven. You might feel good, but you're eventually gonna get bored of it. You're gonna get burned out. You're gonna need one day to just like not be so strict. Um, I mean, you can also still have a bunch of fun doing things that cost that don't cost any money, like. I used to play golf a lot. Now I play frisbee golf. It's mostly free. And you don't need ugly pants. <laughs> you can wear ugly pants. I mean, you can. They're all the rage. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's my last tip. I, I just think it's important to still have fun, um, but be responsible financially, and you'll be set for life. Thanks for watching, guys. So thanks for watching, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think of these tips. Were they helpful? Uh, do you, have, do you dis disagree with any of them? We want to hear from you. And let us know about tips that you have. Like, what are you guys doing to save money? How are you paying off your debt? What kind of content do you want to see more of from us? And I keep talking about this travel stuff that we're doing. So, yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.